Welcome to our great show, the Yaba TV show. My name is CSA, your host. We are going to take you around the world today. We're going to talk about traveling experiences and people that are in the process of traveling. This is definitely the show to watch. You're not just going to be entertained, but you will learn so much from it. I will talk to a woman who have actually traveled to 46 different countries around the world. Then another person, my other guest, she's traveled to several countries too. We will find out how were they able to adapt to the weather, the food, and the people. So today, our show is very special. Let me start with you, Helen. Where did you go? Well, uh, I've been to so many countries. And uh, I went to the Africa start from uh, 1987 mm -hmm. to 46 countries. Okay. And Name uh, some of the countries. Not every one of them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> some country, uh, the name is uh, Ghana. Mm -hmm. I went to the Kenya. Kenya? Yeah. I like to uh, see the, the zoo. Ah, the yeah, zoo. Because I like uh, nature animals. Uh -huh. I like their lifestyle. Uh -huh. They're so beautiful. Wonderful. Where yeah. have you been before? I've been to less countries than she has, but mainly I, I was born in Nigeria, and I've been to England, France, South Africa, mm -hmm. probably a few other countries on the way, mm -hmm. and of course, America, several states within America. Mm -hmm. You know, the part that I enjoy most uh, when Yaba TV does the show, we travel to different countries. When I was in South Africa, they said, are you on holidays? Are you from America? I said, yes. <laughs> and you know what was funny? As much as I think I have an accent, so I'm sure you all can relate to that, they thought I was American. Welcome to our special program, the Yaba TV show. My name is C.S. here, your host. Today we're going to take you around Southern California to showcase African cooking. If you love food, this is it. We're going to show you Nigerian food, Ghanaian, and Ethiopian cooking. So you are in for a very special treat. Tell everybody you know. Today on the Yaba TV show, we're going to see some food. But when I was in college, when we do our international day, whenever I make the food, everybody, Americans from all over the world, they eat the food and they love it. In short, I would say I was discovered from college. You get some little seed inside it that is called melon, and we make it. The name of the soup is egusi soup. Egusi soup. Yeah. We're going to find out exactly what they eat egusi soup with in a minute, right? Yes. They eat, you can eat egusi soup with anything. With rice, with pounded yam, with um, plantain, yam, anything you want to eat it with, you can eat it with. And it's very universal in Nigeria, Ghana, Sierra Leone, like West Africa. Uh, what are you eating? Pounded yam with togbono soup. Can you show our audience how you eat this in Nigeria? Yes, you wash your hand in the water, you unwrap the plastic wrap to expose the pounded yam, then you take a bite at a time and dip it in the Ogbono soup, and you just take a bite. Is this something that you can chew? No, some people chew it, but I like to swallow it, just to swallow. It's more delicious that way. But where you came from, when you grew up, how did you grow up eating it? Where you to swallow. You swallow it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see a little boy by your side. Is that your son? Yes, that's my son. That's Osas. Are you going to feed him too? Yes, I will. Ah, that's very different from a contemporary American way of uh, eating. Everybody have their own plate. Yes. Is, is there a reason why you feed your son from the same plate? Well, we grew up eating together, and sometimes that way I can make sure he finishes food and gets his, the nutrition that he needs. Uh -huh. And he can feed himself, but I just decide to feed him myself. A touch oh. of mother's love? That's it. Yeah, you can say that. When you turn 13 and you figure out uh, mom is the only one at home, and of course you have a sibling who is uh, your role model, immediate role model, tell me how does it feel? Sometimes it's hard. And sometimes it isn't, but most time it's a lot easier because um, when I only have one parent, it's okay because my mom is the best role model I have. 
Oh, that's sweet. I'm sure your mom would love to hear what you just said about her. Uh, let's talk about what are some of the things that you go through sometimes when it's really tough for you to understand why does such thing like divorce happen? Do you, do you go through any moments like that? Let's be honest, any of you. And I never thought it was something that was going to happen to us, but... And it's very hard, like, when you go out and see other families all together and happy and stuff. It does kind of, sometimes, it is a little difficult. But when you know that that was the right thing to do and it was basically the best for everyone involved in the situation, mm -hmm. I kind of put my mind at rest knowing that. But I guess our situation was kind of different because we did have our mom and dad at home before. And the divorce was, like, I was around 11 or so. And since we had already accustomed to living with my dad, Transitioning to him wasn't really that much of a transition because we were used to him already. So it was a little easier, but it was still kind of different when you're accustomed to having both your mom and dad at home and you have to go to having a visit with your dad somewhere else. It was a little different. But at the back of your mind, have you ever thought, hmm, he used, he used to be here for us. He used to be providing and loving and caring, and now he's gone. That feeling is not the same. Do you go through moments like that? Just because he's not physically there doesn't mean he's not there for us. And at first, I didn't understand, but after I realized that this wasn't really an issue of me, it was more of between my mom and dad because they were the ones that were married and not me, I felt that that was a situation that they had to handle between themselves. When you wear regular jeans or regular casual clothes here, how do you feel? I, use, uh, I feel comfortable with it. But do you miss the Yoruba and Buba because you have Yoruba and Buba for exclusive events and you have them for casual wear? Yes, but I, even I can't, I can't wear uh, pants and blouse in Nigeria. Why? I can't. <laughs> Why? Because I'm old. Okay. <laughs> so in other words, when you're old, you are expected to be uh, dressing up on a certain level. Yes. You can't wear everything uh, that youngsters I, are wearing. If I dress like that, there will be you. <laughs> Is that supposed to be disrespect? <laughs> yes. Okay. So the older you are, the more you have to cover up. Yes. Respect that yes. you're passing on the values yes. to your yes. older peer, I mean grandchildren. Yes. To let them know you got to learn to respect yourself. Mm -hmm. And of course, you're respecting others at the same time. Yes. Maintaining the integrity of your culture. Yes. Am I right? Yes. Okay. Tell me, um, even the hair that we do, uh, here we use weaves, extension to look nice and sexy. Over in Nigeria or any West African country, when a woman or people are over 55 years old, if they're doing their hair, what does that imply? Mm. You don't do that. <laughs> we, don't we, do mu that. we must minimize every, every fashion. When you are 50, above 50, going to 60, you must minimize every fashion you want to, you want to make. That you, the type of the one you, any, anybody above uh, 50, 60, they can't do this. We must leave it for our grandchildren. We're going to talk more on that, but we need to take a quick break. We are going to elaborate on the African values and tie it into our topic today, Golden Age in America. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to our beautiful show, the Yaba TV show. My name is Siasia, your host. Today we have something very special for you. As a matter of fact, you may want to take note because when it comes to child naming ceremony in Africa, particularly Ghana, it's very unique. We are going to show you today two people from Ghana, from Fanti ethnic group and Ashanti ethnic group. Both of them are going to tell you their differences and how possibly they all come together to do that thing called naming a child in Ghana. So let me introduce my guest of today's show. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Let me start with you, Joseph. As a fancy man from Ghana, you look Ghanaian enough. Thank, <laughs> Thank you for you. showing us your costume, the sandals, and the wrap around. Before I actually get into today's topic, let's talk about the costume you're wearing. What does this costume represent? 
Well, uh, many cases, uh, especially among the Fantis, whenever there's anything traditionally, this is what we, we put on. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, you call it a term. A term means, you know, this is a cloth that uh, you wrap it on mm -hmm. to signify your position within the traditional group. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we don't want to look the European type, mm -hmm. but then when it comes to tradition, that's what it signifies you as a typical traditional man. The sandal, I know, is not a regular or a contemporary type you see every day around. What does it mean if you have a fabric wrapped around like this and then you wear something different? Would it give you a different look, a different meaning, a different title? Well, definitely it will give you a different look because people will say, oh, where does he come from? Because normally certain things have to go in the traditional way. Mm -hmm. When you put on the wrap, it's supposed to go with the, you know, the traditional sandals. Mm -hmm. And this is why I put on this one, because I wouldn't like to put on the British sandals to look a little bit awkward. Mm -hmm. So once you put on this, it's just like a lady also it's, dressing. It gives you the match, completion. Complete, yeah. Fanti man. Fanti man, thank you. <laughs> so for the Fantis that are watching the show today, I'm sure they are like very excited. Very Say one word to them in Fanti. Oh, one from the my my Miss Sanders, now we, we try really well. And what have you just said? Oh, I just, I'm, I'm telling you to watch me because I'm in my typical traditional outfit. And I'm representing you. That's correct. That's right. yeah. <laughs> Pastor Steve, tell us a little bit, not just about yourself, but the Ashanti cultures. Well, the Ashanti culture actually goes way back in history. Um, we had the Ashanti Empire. Mm -hmm. Uh, which covered a greater part of West Africa. And I shrank into, a, into maybe one fourth of the Ghanaian um, region today. And their history goes way back, mm -hmm. I mean, way back. Um, and uh, Ashantis are very proud of, of the culture because of their background and the, um, the political uh, positions they occupied uh, in times of old which dates way back to thousands of years. Mm -hmm. I've been to Ghana and I know the king, the royalty of Ghanaian Ashanti king. He has his stool, he has a particular place he lives. And when you talk about gold, solid gold, that's <laughs> the world is yet to discover. It's there. Some things are unspoken, but the Ash Ashanti king really has a royalty, the respect people pay to him, and, and, and the things that he does and how he does it with the costume of gold from head to toe. Talk to me about that, please. Their position is actually stationed on, on gold. And what I mean by that is that he, uh, you know, the, the seat of the, the king, which is Manshia, mm -hmm. that is the palace, just like the White House, mm -hmm. uh, is not far from Obwasi. Obwasi is, I believe, the second to South Africa in gold, in, in gold mining. Hmm. And so the Ashanti Kingdom actually was built on gold. And so gold has become a part of the fabric of, of, of their traditions. And that is why uh, they put such emphasis on, on gold. Mm -hmm. I know they have a word uh, called Ashantihini. Am mm. I pronouncing it yes. right? Uh -huh. What does that mean? Ashantihini simply means the king of Asante. Ah. And then they also have uh, something they say Ashanti Kotoko. Asante Kotoko is the, the slogan. Uh -huh. Kotoko uh -huh. is a slogan. And again, it goes back to, to depict the warrior um, mentality of the Ashantis. Uh -huh. Kotoko, Kotoko simply means Kotoko, which means gorilla warfare. Uh -huh. You bow down, you dodge, and you keep going. Kotoko. <laughs> Yes.